टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट दी थर्ड वेंट्रिकल देर आर फोर वेंट्रिकल्स प्रेजेंट इन द ब्रेन दीज आर टू लेक्टल वेंट्रिकल थर्ड वेंट्रिकल एंड फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल इफ यू मेक ए डायग्राम ऑफ द सरप्र like this here you will find this will be the position of lateral ventricle This is cerebral hemisphere. Here is lateral ventricle, which has anterior horn, posterior horn, inferior horn, and this central part. And the ventricle that is this lies here. This ventricle is third ventricle. and here is interventricular foramen this is interventricular foramen this is cerebral aqueduct of salvius this is fourth ventricle so now we'll discuss about the this third ventricle third ventricle is the cavity of the diencephalon it is internally lined by ependyma If you cut a section in midline between two cerebral hemisphere, you will find this is anterior commissure. This is carpus callosum. This is carpus callosum. This is anterior commissure. Anterior commissure. Here is this is lamina terminalis. This is lamina. terminalis lamina terminalis and here is position of optic chiasma this is optic chiasma this is optic chiasma and here is position of tuber sinarium And this is stuck. This is known as pituitary stuck. And here is pituitary gland. This is pituitary gland. Here is mammillary body. This is mammillary body. Here is. so this is anterior commissure this is lamina terminalis here is optic chiasma here is tuber sinarium this is infundibulum this is infundibulum here is mammillary body Here is position of of 
फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल इन दिस डायग्राम यू कैन सी हियर इज दिस इज फॉरनिक्स दिस इज फॉरनिक्स This is pineal gland. This is pineal gland. Here is posterior commissure. Here is habenular commissure. this third ventricle is here it communicates this third ventricle communicates with lateral ventricle anterior superiorly through interventricular foramen or foramen of monro this is foramen of monro monero or interventricular foramen interventricular foramen it is present here this is interventricular foramen or foramen of monero this is from here to here this is lateral ventricle it communicate through this foramen to the lateral ventricle and the thing inferiorly it communicate with posterior inferiorly it communicate with the fourth ventricle this is fourth ventricle through this cerebral aqueduct cerebral aqueduct of sylvius so it has two communications anterior superiorly it communicate with the lateral ventricle posterior inferiorly it communicate with the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct it receives cerebro spinal fluid from lateral ventricle from here it receives cerebro spinal fluid from here and it transmits this fluid cerebro spinal fluid into fourth ventricle through cerebral aqueduct boundary of this third ventricle it is anteriorly bounded by this is fornix here is fornix so anteriorly it is bounded by this fornix anterior commissure and lamina tabernalis this three structure this this and this is form the anterior boundary and posteriorly it is bounded by this pineal gland this is pineal gland here is posterior commissure and here is the commencement of the cerebral aqueduct so from here to here this form the posterior boundary roof is formed by roof is formed by ependyma it is covered by ependyma this is roof and the roof is formed by ependyma this ependyma which lies close to this this is tila coridea this is tila coridea which has coriat plexus this is tila coridea which is formed by pia mater this is fold of the pia mater so roof extend from interventricular foramen to habenular commissure and it is formed by this ependyma this ependyma ependyma is further discovered by tila coridea which again form the coriat plexus 
here is plexus we'll discuss later so this is roof and the floor is formed by floor is from here to here floor is formed by optic chiasma tuber cinereum pituitary stalk or infundibulum here is mammillary body this is mammillary body mammillary body and this portion this is tegmentum of midbrain this is midbrain this is pons this is middle of lamata so this portion is tegmentum of midbrain so floor is formed by optic chiasma tuber cinereum infundibulum or pituitary stalk and here is mammillary body and tegmentum of the midbrain so you have seen anterior posterior superior and inferior boundary superior boundary from the roof inferior boundary from the floor of the ventricle third ventricle now we we'll discuss about the lateral boundary lateral these structures form the lateral boundary so here this is diencephalon and as you know from here to here interventricular sulcus interventricular foramen to cerebral aqueduct there is sulcus this is hypothalamic sulcus this sulcus is hypo thalamic sulcus this is hypothalamic sulcus it divides this lateral wall into two part upper part lower part upper part is thalamus lower part is hypothalamus here also a connexus is present that is known as thalamic connexus by thalamic connexus the thalami of both side are connected with each other this connexus traverses the ventricle it passes within the ventricle it traverses the ventricle so like this it lies here it crosses this so this is interthalamic connexus or thalamic connexus this is hypothalamic sulcus so the structures form the left boundary so this is all about the boundary of the third ventricle you have seen communication of the third ventricle now clinical importance of the third ventricle third ventricle is a narrow space a slit like narrow space if there is any tumor present here or here it may compress or close this ventricle if this is closed or obstructed then what happens then csf flow become obstructed due to obstruction in the cerebral spinal fluid flow there may be hydrocephalus in infants and there may be increase in intracranial pressure in adults in hypothalamic syndrome here and the thing is also present that is diabetes insipidus obesity so this is all about the third ventricle thank you